sponsored by Women Technology. Take advantage of our end of summer promotion, offering a $30 off bundle discount on the whole test takeout panel controls through September 2021. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today's valued viewer request is from Colm VD. Dear Cap, I would like to kindly request that when the F14A is finally released this month that you do some maximum performance time to climb, minimum radius turn and acceleration tests and comparison between F14A and F14B. I'm sure many of us would like to know just how much the F14A underperformed compared to its younger twin. Thank you. Now, this is obviously months of out of date now. I've had it in my can't do folder because people are, have been messing around with the A and the Bravo model, getting them just right. I think they're just about finished or if they haven't, tough because I'm doing it now. It's currently late August 2021. So this is my massive record sheet. I have things like low altitude speed, high altitude speed, ceilings, accelerations, high altitude accelerations, climb rates, blah, 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 blah. Everything I've measured in DCS, basically. I like to keep a big log of empirical data on all of the aircraft in DCS myself because that's kind of a weird thing I like to do. And it's a great time to go and redo the F-14B because the F-14B has changed in many respects. So... I think we will go and do the top speed. Uh, we've got low altitude speed here and high altitude speed. We'll do the accelerations. We'll do the climb rates, at least one of them, I think. We'll do maximum sustained turn. And I think it's a good chance to take us down to the 10% gas because we did the rest of 50% gas. Minimum radius, maybe. Max sustained angle of attack, no, can't be bothered. Air brake strength, no, can't be bothered. Instant altitude, probably not. Roll rate, probably hasn't changed. So I've got probably five, six, maybe seven tests I'll do that I think will be relevant. And obviously the Bravo model is going to be better than the Alpha model in almost every respect, but it would be nice to see how much buy. So I guess we get to work. In terms of the parameters, everything will be ISA conditions. 10% gas and our usual array of parameters. I've done so many of these videos now, I'm going to assume that you know them all off by heart. Let's get to work. For each test, we'll start with the A model, and then do the B model. First, we're going to do the QRA 0 to 20,000 feet climb test at 45 degrees, I think we set it at. So, 3, 2, 1, go. Come on, you big lug. Get those TF 30s roaring. the pitch where is the pitch there it is so 45 degrees there in terms of the altitude we won't go barometric we'll go GPS via the uh, the bar on the bottom so this I think climb rate is all about power to weight ratio I guess it's about wing as well actually I don't really know what do you think what do you think of the most or what do you think is the most important important parameter for climb rate. I suppose a mixture between wing and power to weight. I haven't flown this plane in ages, it's a pretty cool plane. If you were wondering why I never fly the Tomcat, it's not because I dislike it in any way, it's because for some reason the Tomcat and the Tomcat only uh, ruin the track files if you have a large multiplayer game, which means I can't go make the video, you know, afterwards. Uh, basically, that affects me and me only, <laughs> it's, you know, in terms of all the DCS players out there, so it's never going to get fixed. Hence, you're never going to really see me in a Tomcat, it's annoying, but it's not a great deal I can do about it. Tried talking to Heat Blur, can't get anything, so... There you go, boys. Eighteen thousand. Nineteen thousand. Twenty thousand. Punching out. Off you go, my beauty. Three, two, one, go. Immediately much more powerful. In terms of wing sweep and all that kind of jazz like that, throughout all of these tests, I'm just gonna leave everything on auto. Right. Let's 
steep. There we go. 45 degrees. The power. thinking about it the other day there's usually loads of changes between an a and a and a b version or a and a c version you know depending how the uh the type of plane works but there's not actually that many changes between an a and a b and a tomcat the engines have changed there's like two or three switches in the cockpit that's about it right isn't it funny i find it funny anyway wow twenty thousand already guys done ping off you go my beauty much more powerful Right, that was easy. Next, why don't we go and do uh, acceleration. GPS measured true airspeed acceleration, 300 knots to 650 knots, starting at sea level, then we'll go into at 50k. Starting in the A model, here we go. So I've got to get it to 250, we start from 250, and then we measure from 300, that kind of makes sense. It's just how we've always done it, we want to keep it fair and square. And three, two, one. Power on, start the clock at 300. Where's the VSI on this thing? There it is. Puny little motors. Fifty, done. Do you see how suddenly the VSI, when we were going through the sound barrier, the VSI went mental. Never seen that before. Have you guys seen that before? It must be something to do with the pressure on the up and on the top and the bottom of the wings. It must screw up the VSI, and then it starts working again. How interesting. Down to two fifty. It's close enough. And power on. Oh, immediately I can feel that kick in my butt. in the bot bot did you see it you did it again look how interesting done right same job at uh, 15,000 feet true airspeed I just realized that I was reading IAS instead of true airspeed however luckily the way that uh, the airspeed true airspeed and indicated airspeed works it means that as long as I'm at sea level, then they're basically the same. So I can get away with switching to true airspeed now. I don't have to redo the uh, sea level ones. So now I'm at true, true airspeed. It will, of course, make a difference up here. Right, power on. Water bingo fuel. Uh, get the VSI back in play. Start the clock. Impossible to hold it completely level. Uh, I suppose I could use autopilot, but... Um, as long as I stay within a few hundred feet and, you know, mean average the altitude, then uh, it'll work itself out even in the end. Supersonic. Of course, air travels slower the higher we go. So the supersonic number is lower. There we go. Power on. Power. Check it's measuring true airspeed and it is. Getting altitude up to 15k. Sonic. And we're done. Right, that's speed done. Uh, what do you want to do next, value viewers? How about just plain old maximum speed? So let's start with the A model. Sea level, true speed, no wind, blah, 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 blah. We're being fuel. Okay, after travelling many hundreds of miles, God knows where I am now, in fact, let's have a look. Okay, maybe not hundreds of miles, 93 miles. Uh... 817 knots true airspeed. Bravo model, go. Okay, 
Okay, now I can't get it above 804 knots. So why the heck is it 30 knots slower than the much less powerful Alpha model? That's weird. Next, high altitude maximum sustained speed. We're going to start around just under 40,000 feet where it's almost certainly going to get its maximum speed. A version first. I'm going to mess around with the altitudes 30,000, 35, 40, 45. See where I can get the rough maximum speed for the A model and see if it's faster again than the B model upstairs. Off we go. And pause. The A model, I've got the maximum around 37,500 MASL. Uh, about the same we did with the old version at... 1388 knots TAS. B model, slightly different. I got it uh, just above 38,000 and amazingly much slower than the A model. 1256 knots TAS. Just double checking it is the Bravo model. Make sure we've got the asymmetric thrust limit. Yes, definitely the Bravo model. I've definitely been doing right. Much slower. Again, in the B, about Mach 2.1. I'll go and check it out properly in a minute. This isn't right, is it? I think we... Let's go back and look at the results we've got, but I think we'll probably cancel it here because this is clearly not modelled right, right? Okay, guys, so I've decided to terminate the test early because clearly things weren't quite right. So I'm going to show you the data that we've got so far. Just confirm that you guys are happy with me cancelling. So low altitude top speed we'll start with first. You can see I've tested the F-14B every year, once a year, because they change it massively each year. So F-14B release 2019, top speed, low down, all my usual parameters, I'm not going to go through them now, you know them by now, 1.28, 2020 it was 1.31, 2021 which is what we did today, last night actually before I got called to bed, was F-14B uh, 1.22, so a huge reduction in speed from what we believe is a realistic 1.31 to what we think is an unrealistic 1.22, let me know what you think. And then the F-14A, faster, 1.23, even though it's got a vast delta thrust, much less thrust, and the same airframe. I assume you agree with me that that's wholly unrealistic, so let me know what you think, hence cancelling the test. Next, we've got high altitude, sustained speed, didn't bother doing the instant. Uh, we've got on release, oh, I've lost release. If you can see release, let me know. There it is, there's release, let me put that. Release was sustained Mach 2.41 uh, and the next year it was 2.35 which we believe is realistic that seems to agree to the history books uh, the F-14B now has gone all the way down to 2.19 so they put the dragging dates up which is as far as I can see 100% unrealistic and the F-14A <laughs> has gone all the way up to Mach 2.55 so the difference the A is 2.55 the B is 2.1 one nine again as far as i can see completely wrong and unrealistic let me know your thoughts but i'm sure you'd agree with me uh, acceleration low altitude 300 to 650 tas release 1.53 just below a c flank of a special afterburner mode next year detuned to 1.97 so the thrust reduced this year 2.61 thrust reduced again and the a model all the way down here basically matching a mig 21 which is like 0.6 six power to weight ratio or something it's a horrendously bad terrible acceleration let me know what you think there as in like 1950s acceleration high altitude acceleration 3650 tas release just behind the 29a then they cut the power upstairs a full second later then they cut the power again upstairs a full second slower again so we're down to identical with the jf-17 which Okay, fine. And then the A all the way down here below the MiG-19. Again, in the 0.6 power to weight ratio type things, which I think is too low to me. Let me know what you think. Climb rate. I uh, only bothered doing the uh, QRA because I, I had a guess that these wouldn't be working at the moment. I was right, obviously. Climb rate, QRA starts, release. All the way up there with the, the finest F-15 and the MiG-29. 2020 reduced significantly, massively. Less than Hornet right down here with the Jeff. This year, detuned again, below a flanker, all the way down to a Harrier nearly. So it's completely detuned, the F-14. And then the F-14A, wow, even below a MiG-21. You know, really, really poor result there. And that's as far as I went. At that point, I realized this plane isn't right. I'm just going to leave it. And we'll try it again next year. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Bye-bye.